what does being in the zone mean? Really, when you're in the zone, what's happening? The main thing is your mind, your conscious mind, has it's like the volume's been turned down to almost mute. And the activity of your conscious mind is at a very, very low, kind of easy level. It's, it's there, your will's there, but just a little bit. When you're in the zone, you have these intentions, and then that you automatically go and do what the intention is. A lot of the time, you don't even have the attention. You're just in the environment, and the environment directs you exquisitely, perfectly. You do the, you, you commit spontaneous right action. You know, when they talk about saints, when they're faced with any sort of problem, they perform spontaneous right action. They just do the right thing. It's really beautiful. Basketball Brain was designed to get you into that moment more and more frequently. And when you do the program, there's two types of zone. One is kind of a conscious zone, and the other one's an unconscious zone. The unconscious zone is the highest zone. We won't get into that today, but we're going to talk about the four stages of competence, which was a theory derived in the 1970s by a man named Noel Birch. Some people say it was Abraham Maslow, uh, the founder of the third school of psychology, humanistic psychology, which we'll do a ton of podcasts on uh, in the future. But really, it was this guy, Noel Birch. And he said there are four stages of competence. And basketball brain helps you go through these stages much faster. The first stage is unconscious competence. Let's break it down. Unconscious, meaning you're not aware of it. Incompetence, you're not aware that you're not any good. Incompetent means you're bad. So you're unaware that you aren't good at something. You have to recognize, you have to go up to the second stage, conscious incompetence, and realize I'm not good at this. So there's a lot of players out there with terrible form. They're unconsciously incompetent. They have terrible form. They don't even know it. I come across young players all the time who think they're good. They're unconsciously incompetent. So we have to get them up to conscious incompetence, which means we film their shot, for instance, and we show it to them, and then we show them a good shot, and then they become, oh, hey, my elbow's way out here, and everybody else who shoots well, the elbow's in. So they get to conscious incompetence. This is the hard part. The, tra- the transition from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence is relatively simple. You realize you're not any good. The third phase is the most grueling and intense, and it's called conscious competence, meaning you're using your mind to be good at something. You got to think about your elbow being in, the ball on your fingertips, a gap between your ball and the wrist. Your wrist has to be bent at about 90 degrees. Your tricep has to be parallel to the ground. Your toes have to be pointed a certain way. You have to be on balance. You have to keep your eye on the target. Your head can't move. You got to shoot through the shooter's window. You got to hold the follow through in the extension. You got to put your hand in the cookie jar, so to speak. A ton of different things that just seem overwhelming and you have to think about it. And you get one thing right, you check the camera or your coach tells you, yeah, you're holding your follow through now, but look, you're jumping sideways or you're fading away and you're not ready to do fadeaways yet. So you have conscious competence. You're getting better. You're, you're still incompetent, but you're becoming better. But it's a, it's a thoughtful process. You're not a master yet. So if you ever watch a samurai movie, you know, there's that phase where they have to think about every strike and they mess up and they mess up. And the climax of almost every one of those movies is that moment when it goes silent, it moves to slow motion, and you see something click and the guy becomes unconsciously competent. He can perform this maneuver autonomously, automatically. It's like he's possessed. Part of being in the zone is like being possessed uh, in a trance state where you just can't miss. I've done this just shooting, and you can get into it when you're shooting a lot of repetition, repetitions. If you're shooting a ton of three-pointers, sometimes you just get in the zone. All of a sudden, you've made 50, 60 in a row, and you're not thinking There's no thought involved. The crowd doesn't matter. The ref doesn't matter. The other players don't matter. Every time you've been in the zone, you can kind of feel the energy around you and you're feeding off of it, but you're not aware of it. It doesn't, what's happening in the brains of other people isn't affecting what's happening in your brain. Technically, it never is, but now you're you're not even aware of them. 
you're just one with the game. You've entered into the zone and it's such a beautiful place. So we teach you how to get there. A lot of it has to do with your relationship to time. Now that sounds really fancy, doesn't it? The zone has to do with my relationship to time. What is this, Albert Einstein teaching basketball stuff? No, by time we mean you're not worried about the future, time, what's gonna happen, the result of your shot, and you're not worried about the past. So when you're not worried about that, you get into the present. The present moment is sort of timeless. It's right on this wave, and you're, you're, it's like if you imagine basketball as a wave, you're riding that wave. Some players fall off in the back of the wave. Some players crash in the front. They come out too hectic, and they're out of control. The zone gets you right into that unconscious confidence where your, your mind, a silent mind, is a timeless mind because it's not thinking about the past or the future. What you have to do is fill your body and your mind with competence. So you need to shoot perfect form over and over and over again. Some estimates are 20 to 30,000 times, some say 70,000 times, so like 70,000 shots, which sounds like a lot, but if you shoot 1,000 shots a day the right way, you're at 70,000 shots after 70 days. That's like two and a half months, that's nothing. Two and a half months, you can radically transform your game. And then with basketball brain, we teach you to start visualizing very lucidly, very vividly, and start to feeling these shots very vividly. So you have this physical input, and then you have the mental input. So you're kind of, imagine you're just taking your, your cloth, and imagine yourself as a cloth, and we're just dipping you in water, and we're just saturating you with this water. Well, the saturation here is basketball skill. We're taking your body and your mind and we're saturating you in basketball skill, basketball genius, so we can move you from conscious competence to unconscious competence. Short podcast. Check out basketballbrain.com if you want to learn more about mental training. We get tons of emails every day about how it's transforming people's lives. You can have you can have the greatest form in the world, all the skills, the best, best coaches, but if your emotions and your mind aren't right and you're not using them to your advantage, you're not going to reach your potential. Basketballbrain.com. If basketball is your religion, this is your church.